Hello internet. Um, okay, I, um, I've got a few days off this week and uh, ooh, actually let me move into the garage and I have plans on doing all these little jobs um, none of which happened because obviously yeah yeah autumn in the UK and autumn in the UK means pretty much wet all the time wet and grey horrible so no jobs get done um, I've got jobs to do on the S3 um, and I've also got a couple of jobs to do on the Ninja as well so let me show you what I'm going to do. Now the bit I did off camera was a bit of a clean up because the garage was quite frankly a bleeding state. Um, so I got rid of the few old bikes that were down there that I was working on and um, just gave it a bit of a sweep up and a tidy up and, and got the Ninja in the middle of the uh, in the garage. I did want to do this outside but um, obviously yeah, not going to happen. So today these. Um, the brakes on this I don't think have been done for a couple of years now because it just hasn't been worked hasn't been used to be honest um, so I would think by now that the brake pads are probably getting a little bit past the sell by date um, at best so I've got these off the internet from um, let me just see from there you go no plug pay for them myself from AW Motorcycles who deal on oops, deal on eBay of which I've got 10% off my next order um, yeah and they're in Doncaster there you go there's a shameless plug like I say I pay for them myself, I'm not sponsoring these guys, but um, they pretty much came next day. So if you want a good service, yeah, recommended. Um, so I've got these, which are street use only. Uh, the hmm, maniac. Uh, for street use only, they were um, a reasonable price, um, and they claim to be ceramic carbon, uh, scented metal. Um, yes, yeah, a lot of words, but... These are the ones I use. I've used gold in the past and they all seem to be okay. Um, I know they're not overly expensive, but they seem to do the job for, for me and the way I ride. So that's what they're getting. So right, as I said, um, I've got the bike in the middle of the garage. First job I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the brake fluid as well. So I'm gonna suck all the brake fluid out with a little tool of mine. Um, I think to get to that, I've got to take the seat off. We shall see. Um, so I'm gonna drain the whole, uh, back brake fluid system, change the pads, replace the fluid and um, then start on the front. Could be a bit of a long day this. Now for those that have never taken the seat off one of these before, it is dead easy. One screw in there, 10 millimeter, Ooh. give it a crack, dum -de -dum. pull your nut out, your bolt out, whatever you want to call it, put your screwdriver right in the way of the camera, just like that. And what I'd recommend is that stick in the oops. great camera work Reeves let's start again so what I'd recommend is <laughs> sticking it back in there again once you've got that bracket out it simply lifts and pulls there you go um, still can't get to the brake fluid that easily um, and I really want to set the tank off if I'm honest but um, let me drain it first and, uh, and see how easy it is to work on I think I can get it but uh, we'll see in a minute so let's just loosen the cap on that, which is nice and loose, that's good. Um, I just noticed actually there's a bolt there, so um, it might be easier than I thought just to take that bolt out and, uh, and take it off completely. But just loosen the lid for now. Um, yeah, it looks a bit dirty in there to be honest. Um, and what I want to do is get into that nipple just there. Now, I bought myself a little tool, and I think I stained shamelessly stole this off a guy called Kev's Shed who, who I follow on YouTube as well um, I'm sure he used it I think it was his BMW or something like that and I thought that's a great idea it's basically a vacuum pump um, but this vacuum pump you stick a reservoir on the bottom of it or on the bottom of on the bottom of that so it, that sort of goes in there your reservoir goes kind of on there and you can suck all fluid out using it which I thought was a great idea. So uh, yeah, I bought one. Like I say, I think it was Kev's Shed that, uh, that showed me this one. Uh, I've seen them in the past, but um, it gave me that idea to, to go out and get one. And I'm sure it was 30, 40 quid. It wasn't expensive, but yeah, it's the first time I'm gonna use it. And uh, I've got a feeling it may just do the job nicely. Right, let's give it a go. Okay, so I've got it assembled. I've got the pipe going into the reservoir, and then the pipe goes up to 
Oops, let me get round the back here, I can see it better. Goes into the bleed nipple just there. Um, yeah, not great camera work, Reeves. Yeah, bleed nipple just there. So I'm going to crack it off now, um, create some suction, and um, hopefully suck all the fluid out from there in the cylinder and throughout the whole line. Right, let's give it a go. Crack it first of all. Yeah, always difficult to do it with the <laughs> camera in hand, but hey YouTube, such is life. And now, I'm going to build up some pressure. Okay, pressure's building. Uh, not much happening so far. Oh, no, I, t I tell a lie. We've got fluid coming out. Look at that. That is definitely working. Right, I think I need to give it a little bit more crackage. It's coming out a treat now. Look at that. Oh, that's... Oh, I can hear it. Yeah, it's sucking it out of there. Pressure's dropping. Yeah, as you can hear, it's definitely sucked all that fluid out. I expected more to come out to be honest, but there you go, we've got, I can measure it, look at this, um, yeah we've got an amount, <laughs> oh, science lesson, 20, 20, 30, I don't know, what do you reckon, 20, 30, 40, 50, that's about 30, 40, yeah, that's some fluid anyway, right, well that was easy enough, um, I'm impressed with that, very impressed. So, um, now, oh, send it. <laughs> I've got, there's a lot of noise around here today. Right, now I'm going to take those two bolts out and uh, just check the caliper over, make sure that everything is free and easy, and uh, then top fluid up. And hopefully what I can do is suck the fluid back in the same way I sucked it out in the first place. Right, let's get going. It is off. Uh, didn't take a lot. Like I say, there was just a couple of Allen head bolts there. Um, what size is the Allen head? Yeah, that size. Um, so it was that size Allen bolt head. Um, I disconnected the pipe from the actual caliper itself. Obviously, keeping the uh, the washers there because if you lose those, it's going to leak like a sieve. Um, and obviously, just need to. Yeah, make sure that's clean. Um, so the caliper itself is off the disc. Uh, what I'm going to do now is basically just um, yeah, have a good look around it, making sure there's nothing that uh, is untoward. Um, and then yeah, put the new pads in, make sure the piston's all okay, give it a bit of a clean up as well, and um, put it back on the bike with the new pads in there. So we're on the equally as um, disgustingly dirty bench. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll make yourself a nice new bench. Uh, it's still okay for now. Um, right, as I say, going to now take it to bits and uh, basically take the pads out, uh, make sure it's working okay, give it a good clean up, etc., etc., and then reassemble it again. As you can see, they come out pretty easy enough, and uh, there's loads of meat left on them, uh, to be fair. Uh, but again, they've been in there a few years, uh, at least two, probably three, if I'm totally honest. Uh, so although there's plenty of meat on them, it's probably time we get some new ones in there anyway. Um, right, going to give us a clean up now. Um, obviously, all that's holding those in was that pin there, like that. So the pin comes out, uh, split pin first, pin comes out, and then you get the pads out. Got the mess out again. Better be quick. Okay, there you can see the 
piston turns around absolutely lovely nothing wrong with that at all that is brilliant so as you can see the slider moves nice and easy on its own so I'm not going to pack that with grease there seems to be plenty in there at the moment yeah, so I don't think there's any need to, to add any more looks good to me feels good to me not going to worry too much about that um, obviously the silver retaining clips are in there as well uh, you don't want to lose those actually going to get uh, a world of pain um, a little groove on that pin there um, nothing major at the moment nothing to worry about at all so now it's just a case of slipping them back in again so basically you can see they've got the metal backing plates on there to stop squealing so you hook that on there like so yeah he says um, uh, that feels a little tight um, right let's make sure that these are the right ones yeah yeah look good um, okay this is me being stupid isn't it yes it is it's definitely me being stupid that flat bit there is obviously for a reason mm, or maybe not Right, well that, to be honest, is the first stumbling point. Um, that fits over there quite easily. And that is, I believe, yeah, slightly bigger. Oh dear, okay. Um, maybe gold isn't the best pad. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to fit over there. Um, right, let me get a drill in that and just... Um, just make sure it's fit for purpose. Okay, I've run a quick drill through there. It was more of a D bird than anything else. I think what's happened is just in the casting process, it uh, it's just got a little bit of uh, swarf around the edge of it. So that now should fit on there. He says, "Yep, there we go." So I said in the first place, <laughs> that fits on there like that. That one goes in there. Like get in there. that one goes in there like that, and then you run the pin through the middle again to secure them down. Obviously, that's got to fit inside that bracket. Which I'll do in a minute. So the pin's through. Just tap that home. The split pin back in there again like so so you can see there it uh, I hope you can see that it just retains it in there and the pads are both in so now all that remains is to just get that seating properly he says with loads of confidence um, hold on. I can see the problem it's all live this <laughs> Not be able to tell. Okay, so that uh, that metal retaining clip was just just holding it a little bit. There we go. So there we go. That's now seated back there. That is seated in there. Just give them a little bit of a. There you go. They're in. Right. Let's get it back on the bike again. Okay, so the caliper's back in again and everything's nice and loose, nice and free, so that's okay. Uh, just the bolts stick in now, these ones, just going to stick a little bit of Loctite on them and crack them up and uh, then join me when that's done. Okay, the bolts done up. Uh, I think if I said before in some of my other videos, let's just get that drip before we uh, carry on. Yeah, I've said before in my other videos, you don't need to go mental with the Loctite. Uh, just a little dab on the threads. Um, it is glue at the end of the day, but it's just there to stop them vibrating loose. You don't want your brakes falling off for obvious reasons, but uh, really do not go crazy with it. Um, just the finished of sliver on the threads will do the job. Right, let's get the, uh, the pipe back on again and let's get some fluid in the system and see if we can get this back brake functional again. Okay, so we're all connected there and bolted up. I did remove the reservoir because uh, <laughs> it had an extremely long, exceptionally long bolt in it. There you go, there's the bolt that came out of it. Yeah, a little bit um, on the overkill side. But um, I think just bringing it forward like that is the easiest way to do this. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, I can't uh, do this without two hands. So I'm going to fill that up and then you can join me back for some suction. 
Okay, we have fluid. We have a pump. Let's get some suction going. Obviously make sure at the same time I'm uh, topping up the reservoir. Last thing we need is to run out of the fluid. Got some good suction going there. We've got some fluid coming through. Albeit very slow. Let's, right, let's crack. There we go. Just need a little bit more action on the nipple. That's all it needs. A little bit of nipple action. There you go. So we've got some suction going on. Only about, uh, what's that, bar? Um, yeah, it's in HG vac, whatever that is. Yeah, but uh, yeah, as you can see, we've got some fluid coming out now, and the fluid level is definitely going down there. So I'm going to get a little bit going through. Going to give it a bit of a flush as well at the same time. So obviously keep topping this up. Obviously loads of cloths around here in case of spilling because this stuff is good for paint stripping. There we go, so yep, the fluid is coming through quite nicely now. That looks looks good to me. Looks like there's been a good good vacuum on there. Give it just a little bit more. There we go, do it from this angle. Definitely got plenty of fluid coming out. Don't see any air bubbles anymore. So I think that is about where I'm going to call it a job well done. Right. If we look at this, put it level We're on the lower level. So top that up a little bit, put it back in its space, put the bolt back through, um, and then that I think. It's just about the back brake done. Give it a few pumps, obviously make sure it's all okay. And uh, yeah, I think we're about done. And I think we are good. We're on the upper level there, as far as I can see. Um, I've given the brake a few pumps and it all looks pretty good. Yeah, that's how it used to be before. So um, yeah, that to me looks like the back brake done. Um, the front brakes I think I might leave to another day because this has taken a little bit longer and uh, I've got a couple of jobs to do so this may be a two-parter I think but definitely the back brakes done and I've got to say that um, this machine here definitely worth getting it's um, it's good I like it all right catch up for part two guys <laughs>